Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be BSL Season 14 Hasuli, the first match of Group G. Very excited about this group because of this man in particular. We got good old 80s mullet starting as the blue Terran in the upper right hand corner, the people's Terran. Go ahead, if you are not subscribed to his, his Twitch channel, pull that up because he has a very chill stream. And yeah, he's just been a figure in the community. And we're going to have, I don't remember the last time we've been able to do a TVT, but we got Tucson in the bottom left hand corner active player in the community as well. He will be the Red Terran. This is going to be on Eclipse. On Eclipse. And I'm going to be honest, I might be a little out of practice for TVT because I cannot remember the last time. I'm not sure what the meta is currently. Last time I checked, Heavy Vulture Openers were the big meta. I've been a little bit lacking on Artosis' stream because of... Uh, I guess I'm just going to shout out all the streams on this cast. I've been a little bit lacking on being able to watch Artosis' stream because I've been trying to take care of other things in the background. But at least to start, we are not seeing any cheese. Both these guys... So Tucson's a bit of an unknown player to me. I think this is the first time I'm seeing him. I don't know if he was in... I know his name. I've seen him around in the community, but I have not seen his play to be able to comment on it one way or the other. I can comment, uh, comment on 80s Mullet. 80s Mullet has his bread and butter build orders. He's decent... Uh, I feel like he's actually pretty strong versus Protoss. He's decent versus Terran. I'm not sure what shape he's in because, again, I've been a little bit lacking in being able to watch. Be, you know, because... How do I put this? Infinite time is a precious resource. I haven't had infinite time to fight, and so I've only been catching him on lunch breaks. And on my lunch breaks, he's usually been playing Zerg, actually, and doing pretty well in that regard. Forward barracks to potentially get a front door seal. Tucson not opening up. Which potentially could indicate that he's thinking about getting more aggressive with factory openers rather than going for just the standard one fact into expand. On Eclipse, because it, I'm not sure if the Vulture meta has become more of a thing because of just because of how meta just shifts and where it's kind of like this is the standard new thing, or if it's just been because of all of the maps recently. Having such a wide open area for vultures to just run absolutely everywhere and also that we've had a lot of kind of ramped areas like this where you can see mines right there can really wreak havoc on tanks trying to go up looks like tucson going to be able to get that first scout in slightly ahead but that means more minerals in 80s malt pocket tucson kind of hiding his stuff looks like he only has a single scv in gas though is going to be able to so interestingly enough because of the placement of all of this the Marine might be able to box this SCV out. Uh, not quite, though. And the SCV able to wander up. It's going to be able to see how many workers are on gas. Seeing just that one knows that this is more likely than not going to be a fast expansion. Kind of juking around that corner. First Marine out. This SCV went ahead and ran for the hills after that first Marine. Looks like 80s Mullet actually doing the exact same build order. And as far as execution... Currently, both players are dead even. Except it looks like there's one more Marine out on the front. 80s Mullet already setting up. That one Marine difference might translate into a slightly factor faster command center. That command center is being dropped. Two Marines now holding the front to deny additional scouting information. And now Tucson going to be able to go ahead and wander across. He, see, he confirms the command center. Ironically... He might be able to get aggressive with this initial vulture. Machine shop dropping. So an initial siege tank. Is, and this is kind of the interesting part of this meta right now. Is, is with a vulture, you can kind of slide out on the field. But siege tanks, obviously, when you're in a more defensive posture, they can take care of those vultures if you can get them in sufficient numbers a little bit more successfully. But this vulture does have an opportunity to go out and be aggressive. Maybe even slow down this command center if it got to move on. Not that he's aware of this. Second factory being plopped down. Still no additional SCV in gas. Where we do have three SCV on gas on the opposite side. 480's mullet. Because he is building those more expensive tank units. Two vultures now out in the field. Still no machine shop. So they would be slow if they decided to move across the map. But by the time all of this filters out. And I think this is a big indicator here. Having that single siege tanks out is an indicator that Tucson might want to, if he's going to go in with the Vultures, he's going to need to have speed and dive in. But I think the better play might just be to upgrade mines here. Go ahead and plant mines along kind of this edge and try to get early map control over here uh, and potent and basically cut... And then it becomes like the, the macro race. 
Armory plopping down for 80's mullet, which suggests maybe he's going to go for plus one timing push. Two siege tanks making their way across. Mines have not been upgraded. And Tucson might be in trouble here because he's only got two vultures and two marines. So if he's going to pull off the line to defend this, he's going to have to pull SCVs. The marine, however, getting distracted. SCV is going to go ahead and peek in behind this. So Tucson's going to know what he's dealing with. Looks like the vultures and marines moving to the north to kind of hide the troop count. Might be able to pick off the marine behind this. A goliath and a siege tank being produced. So might have sufficient troops to go ahead and defend. But it's going to come down to a bit of repair micro. There's a vulture here for 80's mullet as well. Now walking into the natural expansion. Getting some shots off. Here's the siege tank on the low line. SCV's now pulling out. So this is going to be delayed mining time. The marine already picked off. The vulture's trying to crash down. And able to pin one siege tank. Hero SCV's. Tucson defends. But this is delayed mining time. And he's going to be behind the overall worker count. Two more vultures sneaking in. Able to get some kills. And it looks like this attack is going to be repelled. Might get the barracks. And actually, that barracks is going to be necessary. Let's see if 80s is going to get a fourth factory down. If he was thinking about fourth factory, the armory's here. But it looks like it is going to go ahead and remain silent. No Goliaths have been produced. No Goliaths have been harmed on 80s mullet side of things. Vulture's now planting mines in 80s mullet with this push. First of all, big supply lead. Also, a big supply of block for Tucson in the midst of that attack. Huge minefield. And as long as there's attack troops to go ahead... So Goliaths can chew through mines without detection oftentimes. But when you have those vultures that are right there that can sneak underneath and interrupt their micro. Can really mess things up. A Wraith? How did I miss this? A Wraith in the background for Tucson. Plus one weapons being upgraded. Upon seeing the lack of Goliaths, and it looks like it was able to slow down this factory... 80s Malt still ahead in supply, ahead in workers. This is definitely going to make holding this forward line more challenging. Goliath looks like he was on move command, again going to get intercepted. But the Wraith going to see a lot of troops and going to be able to poke away at them, which is going to potentially going to break this contain. Although there's still a lot of mines to take care of, this poor siege tank. This is not the way you want to go as a siege tank. The Goliath now moving forward. I don't think cloaking is there. A dropship being built. So Tucson want to go ahead and he's saying, okay, well, all your troops are out of position with that forward contain. I just want to go ahead and drop over these lines and make it happen. I think that Wraith, nope, Wraith's still alive. And it was pick, able to pick off that siege tank. So now a drop of four Goliaths making their way to the 12th. Well, that third base being built by 80's mullet, but might get interrupted and taken out. These vultures do have speed to go ahead and intercept that, but Goliaths trade very well against vultures. Fifth factory coming online. Plus one weapons about halfway finished. So 80's mullet in the lead for the moment. Worker count about even. But this drop... I don't know if 80's mullet spotted it or not, but he is drawing his troops back. This could be the moment that Tucson gets back into this match. Goliath there. The vultures trying to careen in to interrupt this. SCVs, however, being taken out. The vultures able to engage... And no Goliath to stop this dropship. So this might be an additional interruption. So finally the Goliath right there. This might be an, interu an interruption over the third. Tucson at least able to confirm. Is he going to be able to kill that SV? Is able to kill that SV. Let's see if he's able to force a cancellation. 80's Molt had transferred some SCV. So he's having trouble some microwing. And getting them in position. Losing some troops. And Tucson using this opportunity to move out a huge task force. To kill everything on the front. Dropship scooping right back up. So Tucson doing some nice combo behind this. And now 80's mullet, I think, is going to be behind, potentially, in the tank count. He's moving out with more siege tanks, trying to stage up just in case Tucson wanted to get aggressive. But Tucson has opened things to where he potentially can go ahead and grab a third. He's going to go up to five factories, getting a science facility as well. His plus one weapons not online yet. That dropship eating a lot of damage. So plus one weapons is online for 80's mullet where it is not. So he's going to have at least moments where he's economically ahead. Three machine shops have been dropped. So that's potentially a lot of siege tanks. But an, the Wraith able to sneak in for Tucson. To again get more SCV kills. The Goliaths 
Not sure where the Goliaths are to respond. I think AD's Molot having trouble finding his Goliaths as well. It looks like they're still... So Tucson doing a good job of being absolutely everywhere. That's putting him ahead in the SCV count, despite there being three bases. AD's Molot able to interrupt that 9 o'clock base. There's action happening absolutely everywhere. Tucson somehow ahead in the, in the worker count. And ahead in that count of supply. It's still no cloaking for this Wraith. And while it wasn't getting babysat, it looks like it's going to get wiped out. The drop able to clean up that Vulture. The dropship's still alive, a little bit low on health. Goliath's now going to hold position, but Tucson, moving into the mid-game, has been able to equalize things. He's plopping down two additional factories. That is going to give him the factory count lead. He has the economy to roll it and make it stronger. He has not pushed the weapons upgrade as of yet. 80's Mullet does have some nice positioning, however, on his half of the map. But he's going to have to macro. Let's see if he gets two factories up, because if Tucson builds, yeah, just keeps his macro rolling, he will end up taking the overall macro lead, and it looks like we are seeing that. However, in TVT, oftentimes it's literally an uphill battle. As you can see, you know, there's your hill. And 80's Mullet already has position. To go ahead and defend that. Plenty of mines and defense for Tucson in the opposite corner as well. The big X factor here is still that dropship that can create some chaos play for Tucson. He's dropping his third machine shop, so that's going to be plenty of tanks for him. Seven factory count. Six factory being added for 80's mullet. He's trying to filter in the additional siege tanks. Tucson with the supply lead. But the positional advantage, potentially in 80's Mullet favor. The Vulture is able to sneak through, able to get on top of these siege tanks to the north. Two of the tanks aren't sieged, and Tucson not even sieging up, just going to be able to push into this. 80's Mullet with a desperation siege behind this, but Tucson pressing that front line. And a favorable exchange. 80's Mullet all of a sudden, though, surging ahead in the supply count. Some Vultures... Able to sneak through, but Goliaths are there to intercept them immediately. I think he wanted to catch that SCV transfer. Not quite able to do so. So still an open lane for either player to filter Vultures through, but with the current Siege Tank positioning, 80's Mullet a little bit more in a defensive slot. However, with the additional factory down and nice, ma nice macro, Tucson is surging ahead in the overall supply count, but a lot of that is in Vultures, where 80's Mullet seems to be opting to build more Siege Tanks. Finally adding his 7th factory. Haven't seen... I'm not sure if that dropship died. The dropship's still here. It's fully repaired. It hasn't really been a factor here. Tucson now testing the right flank. Vultures are able to get on top of some siege tanks here. So a nice attack here. 80's Molt trying to regroup. Has 5 tanks behind this. But still is not holding the high ground advantage now. So Tucson slowly finding space to climb forward. Tucson still with a slight supply lead. Things are dead even now at the 13 minute mark. More siege tanks and vultures filtering through. Tucson's by by and large been the aggressor in this fight. 80's Molt trying to reposition. But if you can take this ground, it's a hop, skip, and a jump to seal your opponent and really kind of crack map positioning altogether. Fourth base Already built for Tucson. Going to fly it forward. There's two vultures waiting. 80's Malt may be looking for a counterattack across the northern flank. But Tucson preempting. He's got a good amount of troops bunched up to potentially engage. I'm not sure where that dropship is, but it's... Keep in mind, it could be somewhere on the front. So Tucson... 80's Mullet really concerned about holding the inside 3 o'clock location. Tucson going to go go ahead and back up momentarily. Some siege tanks moving up for 80's mullet to potentially either attack that 9 o'clock, I guess 10 o'clock position, or grab that base simultaneously. It looks like the SCV's coming along with the fight, though. So he's going to be fighting uphill, but the tanks aren't sieged in time. So finding positioning to go ahead and cap and push into this. Mine's not laid yet either. But 80's mullet doesn't like what he sees. Looks like there were superior troops there for Tucson, so he's going to go ahead and back out, but he's grabbing his fourth base as well. This means this base is, well, if it gets mining, SCV's already in transfer. That will be an economic lead for Tucson. He's up 20 supply. 
currently just out macroing the People's Terran. And now a big Tucson spin the aggressor throughout this match. A big troop movement at 80's weak point. He had a lot of troops staged at the inside 12 o'clock location, but now he's breached the inside 3 o'clock plateau and starting to move on the low ground. But honestly, with this position, he can just siege up. This cuts off a lot of territory for 80's mullet. Tucson now knocking on the door. He still has that dropship someplace. 80's mullet able to grab this 4 o'clock. This is kind of clever. So floating command center trying to sneak a fifth. Maybe he's going to go ahead and float this in the upper left-hand corner. Try to take an advantage there. Also, the armory's been silent. Plus two weapons, plus one armor. Tucson's troops just hit harder. So there's more troops. They're more heavily upgraded. 80's mullet down a base. So Tucson is about to hit 200, 200. And he has a really strong positional advantage here. Actually, even bringing SCVs to go ahead and repair. Vulture's going to clear out that Goliath on the bottom right. Also just mining up everything else just to make sure that 80's mullet can't sneak an additional base. And Tucson with this attack force, he can go ahead and pressure the fourth expansion. 80's mullet trying to get troops in position to go ahead and defend this. But he can also, if 80's mullet overextends, ooh, that was a big mind drag onto the counter Vulture. So 80's mullet might be able to defend with this. But keep in mind, level two weapons, level one armor. The Vulture's able to get on top of some siege tanks here. But if 80's mullet overcommits, looks like nice defense. But if he overcommits troops to that upper left-hand corner, that is going to open up Tucson to move, take out this siege tank line, and potentially seal him in. So it's a very tentative situation. And the upgrade lead very much in Tucson's favor, plus the supply lead. 80's mullet has tacked on. So he's sitting at 7, 8, 9, 10. He's got the 10 factories behind this. We got 8, 9 behind this. And a dropship fleet has been produced. So we got four dropships. Tucson now moving forward, clearing out the siege tanks. 80's mullet out of position to defend, trying to draw the troops back. This could be the defining moment of the match. Tank siege behind them, plus two weapon upgrade. These tanks aren't sieged, and they're walking into siege tank fire. A lot of them getting wiped out. Tucson, I'm not seeing reinforcements, but he does have the low ground here. Engineering Bay moving forward to provide some scouting information, but if Tucson now... So he's reinforcing the top corner. If he can defend here and just pocket a few more troops up to this corner, that means reinforcements are going to be boxed out for 80's Mullet. 80's Mullet realizes this, trying to push down on top of this, unseaging his tanks, driving into the line, getting some mines at close position. Needs to breach this. Unable to breach it thus far, though. And this is a critical moment. Tucson, while those troops are out of position, he's saying, you overcommitted there, so I'm going to push in on your fourth. 80's Mullet now behind in supply. Looks like he might lose his fourth base, and this could be the defining GG moment. He's having to reinforce troops across a very thin window. He has to be very careful with those reinforcements. Vultures are getting in on top of those siege tanks from Tucson. Some... These tanks on sieging, though, are the mines going to be able to clear this up? They blow up everything. Nice defense by 80s. So 80s now sitting at four bases. Tucson at four bases. Tucson on a much better position to go ahead and grab an additional base. He holds the three o'clock plateau. Some Goliaths filtering in. He still has this X-Factor dropship fleet, but and maybe needs to get some of those troops in position now. Double armory up but silent currently for 80's molten that is killer because Tucson has been keeping up with his weapons upgrade so he's got level 3 weapons level 2 armor and now pushing up into the 4 o'clock base and there's a lot of reinforcements to knock down those mines so the mines are not going to be the salvation this time 80's molten done a great job using mines to defend despite the upgrade advantage Volter's now on top of 80's molten base at the 4th and so this base looks like it's going to get wiped out that's Lifted off the SCVs in flight. This troop positioning, you can see where it just... Yeah, they have to be very careful as they're engaging across this line. Tucson actually grabbing the upper left-hand corner with that... CC blocking. Like a CC block? Anyway, upper left-hand corner. So 80's Molt not able to take that fourth base. Now Tucson way ahead in the supply. Even grabbing another base. 
over his own mines in that bottom right hand corner. 80s Molt distance mining here. And trying to recapture. But Tucson now staging up. He wants to go ahead and cut off the reinforcement point. SEV potentially leading the way. There's one siege tank on the low ground. 80s Molt trying to sneak back to defend this. But he can't. So basically sacking the fourth with this attack. And that's going to be GG Tucson. So 80s Molt with a strong opener. But Tucson doing everything to get back in the match and ends up through some solid macro and upgrades pulling the advantage that's going to send 80s mullet unfortunately our Terran hero to the losers bracket and we'll see who he faces on the opposite side hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for listening